Hello and welcome to another episode of Brewery Towns, the podcast that talks about brewing beer throughout the country. My name is Matt and today I am joined by Chelsea. Hey. Where are you calling in from? Right now I'm in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania and I'm calling in from my home office where I do my, my regular job. And um, how far away is that from Scran, the Electric City? Uh, the Electric City, it's about... Honestly, probably all said and done, like, good 25, 30 minutes. People think it's a lot closer, but... Yeah, yeah, it looks closer on a map. Yeah, it's definitely... I drove up to Dunmore <clears throat> um, the other day, and it took me, like, almost, like, 27 minutes. Wow. That sucks. I know. Well, I hope you enjoy your time there, at least. Yeah, um, we're loving it, honestly. Like, it's... Definitely really dingy and a couple steps backwards from <laughs> Omaha. Sure, But sure. we have a super good group of um, friends that we, we met at the gym. And honestly, being so close to, like, my hometown friends and family, it nothing beats that. Well, that sounds great. And you, you gave away the town we're going to do today. Yeah. So we're going to talk about Omaha, Nebraska. And before we get started... <laughs> The sources for this episode were the Lincoln Star Journal and the Omaha World Herald. You may have gotten some of those delivered to you. Um, electronically. (laughs) (laughs) So how long did you live in Omaha for? I actually lived there an exact three years. Uh, July, July 5th, um, of 2017 to this past July 5th. Cool. So I hope once we get to like the breweries that are currently open that you will have a lot to say. Yeah. Okay. So let's do some basic background information first. Omaha is the county seat of Douglas County. It is on the eastern border of Nebraska, uh, right on the shores of the Missouri River. And across the river is Iowa. Yeah. People don't realize how close... Iowa is. Um, I actually think the Omaha airport is technically in Iowa, and people were so <laughs> confused when I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to Iowa tonight. They'd be like, what? <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. <laughs> okay, so the population of Omaha is 450,000, and the metro has about 1 million, which I don't know if you knew this was about two, is about half of Nebraska's population in the Omaha, greater Omaha area. Definitely knew that. Having a boyfriend live in western Nebraska, we talk about it often <laughs> because everyone kind of just does this trail of um, their, like, Kodong towns to Lincoln, mm-hmm. where University of Nebraska is. And mm-hmm. then after um, they're done their time in Lincoln, they usually move to Omaha. Wow, what a what a strange journey. Yeah, and so, like, all of, all of uh, my boyfriend's friends from, like, high school and grade school, like, did the exact same trek. So, like, you just kind of stay in touch with them because they're in the same city as you. Are they going to keep moving east, do you think? I don't know. Will they follow us? They're probably not smart enough to. (laughs) Well, it seems like you guys already have new friends, so I guess you don't need them. Yeah, team new friends. We love our new friends. We're we're having a blast with them, so. Back to Omaha here. So, I don't know if you knew this, but its nickname is Gateway to the West. I'm pretty sure that's every town... West of the of the Appalachian Mountains, yeah, Gateway to the West, and it first exploded when the Union Pacific Railroad had their headquarters there in the 1860s. Right, right. I hear a Prairie or yeah, Prairie Valley a lot, like Silicon Valley, Mm -hmm. but Prairie Valley because um, a lot of the tech companies um, buy land there and do their data storage. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Now, every episode, I don't know if you listen to many, every episode we do a hometown. Yep. Now, can you name someone who is famous and from Omaha? Ooh, um, I can. There's like a number of people that are from there. It's a pretty big city. Okay, first, uh, well, definitely the guy from, um, oh, what's his name? He's like a comedian, and he is on one of those sitcoms. That's terrible. <laughs> What's his name? Um, you know who it is? Uh, everybody loves Raymond. No. Ray- is it Raymond? Uh, no, it's not. Um, is it Sheldon Cooper? Nope. Well, um, I also think I know. I think this is this is definitely switching gears, but I think uh, Gabrielle Union. I think is from Omaha. Really? Yes. 
Oh, yeah. It, I, I just pulled up the list of famous people, and it says she is from there. And yeah. let me see if I can find your mystery man. Uh, what is his name? You don't remember the show at all? No. Is You're going to laugh at me. When... Is it Skip Stephenson? I don't even know who that is. Is it Andrew Rannells? No. Don't worry. We'll, we'll delete this all out. So, um, tsh, tsh. Harry Fonda. Huh. Adam Devine. I don't Nic- know who that is. Nicholas is D'Agosto. That um, yeah, Adam Devine is who I was thinking. Are you sure? Yes, 100%. I've never like, heard of him. What? From Workaholics? Oh, is that? Oh, oh, I'm, I see him now. I, yeah, I noticed the face. Okay. Yeah. So he's in, he's in, um, what else is in? He's in Pitch Perfect. He's in Pitch Perfect 2. Yeah. 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 But, uh, Workaholics was what I was trying to talk about. He is from Omaha. Okay. I mean, on his Wikipedia, it says he was born in Waterloo, but I guess he might have moved to Omaha. Waterloo, Nebraska? Waterloo, Iowa. <laughs> Oh, okay. by the no, by the by the airport. Oh, I think he went to um, yeah, I think he went to like school in like Papillion or something, which is in Omaha. So gotcha, gotcha. Anyways, Gabriel Union, Gabriel Union was the only one I know, and I don't know why, but so I I have just another person that I only I only write down one person, but Warren Buffett. Oh, from Omaha. Yeah. So I used to I used to pass his house every day on my way to work. Does he still have a house there? He does, yeah. Huh. I think that's where he lives. It's got security and stuff on it, so I'm pretty sure he's still there. Wow. Well, <gasps> there, you, there you go. Lots of good people from yeah. Omaha. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the founding. A little bit of history here. Now, do you know what the name Omaha means? I do not. So there's two different variations. Some people say... It means dwellers of bluffs, because I guess there's like bluffs there that Native Americans used to live in. Right, right. And then some people think it means against the current. I'm not sure where that one comes from. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, across the river, across the river in Iowa, like if you go over the bridge, it is council bluffs. Council bluffs. And I have written down here, that's where Lewis and Clark uh, stopped on Correct. their expedition. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. There is a little like uh, historical tour over there and stuff. That that would be interesting to see. Yeah, there is some there is some uh, very interesting uh, history out there. It's definitely a say. Yeah, and one other thing I've written down is that in 1846, it was the winter headquarters for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Oh, I know. Also very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then it finally became the Nebraska Territory in 1854. Yeah, I always laugh at that when, I I don't know, I think when I was there, they had their, like, centennial, and <laughs> I was laughing so hard. I'm like, you guys just became a state? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. like compared, compared to Pennsylvania, I feel like I know. like nothing. No? <laughs> I, it, it's, like, really crazy just how recent the history is, like, of the, of the entire West. Right, right. Very, very, it feels very new. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to start talking about some beer? Let's talk about some beer. Now, now before we get into it, you might recognize some of the names. I'm sure some of them last, but do you know any historical breweries in Omaha? Uh, historical? Mm-hmm. I don't know any historical ones. Okay, well, maybe these will, some of these will ring a bell. So okay. there were really three big ones in the history of Omaha brewing. The first okay. one was called Krug & Seltzer Brewing Company. And it was founded okay. in 1859. And there's some debate here whether it was the first one because this brewery called McCum was founded in 1854, but they have records that they didn't start brewing until 1861. So the first brewery in the city goes back and forth between these two. Interesting, because mm-hmm. my, one of my favorite bars in Omaha is called Krug Park. Mm-hmm. So I guess mm-hmm. it comes from Fred Krug Brewery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, he was like a really big guy, just... Not only a brewer, but just like a big guy in the history of the city. Yeah, interesting. And he looked like a bigger guy too. Oh, but like that's in size. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. size and stature. Okay, so Frederick Krug and Rudolf Seltzer were the owners, and then Krug bought out Seltzer a few years later. So, whenever you see like memorabilia from this, it's always Krug Brewing Company. Yeah. 
and let's see, they, the article that I got this from claimed that the brewery was the first brick building in all of Omaha. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And the, one of the products that they made was called Luxus, and the tagline was, the beer you like. Oh. Yeah, can't <laughs> argue. Simple. Yeah, can't argue with that. No. You don't need Mad Men here to come up with that puppy. No, you don't. So the next one that came around was Metz Brothers Brewing Company. Okay. And they bought out McCum Brewery, and then they just changed the name because it was two brothers and their last name was Metz. Okay. And that's kind of all I have for the beginning of that one. So that's the second big one, Metz Brothers. And then the third big one was called Stores and Eiler. And this was yeah, founded... So I'm, I'm familiar mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk a little bit about Stores. They like made a comeback recently. And that's why I was kind of asking you if you knew any of them, because I was thinking you might know that one. The only reason I kind of know that name, though, is... Um is from like legacy in um and donations to the hospital because we have Mm. like some stores stores pavilions um Mm. in in the hospital so yeah oh interesting so let's see they bought out sarah they bought out saratoga brewery which was in saratoga which is north of omaha but i think it's like part of part of omaha now i don't know if that rings a bell and uh the owners were gottlieb stores and john eiler and um, Gottlieb worked at a place in St. Louis called Lemp Brewery. I'm not sure if you ever heard yeah. of that. Uh, it was one of the big ones there. And then he eventually bought out John Eiler and, because Eiler started the Omaha Brewing Association. Interesting. So that's a little background of Krug, Metz Brothers, and Stores. And now, I've never done this before, but we have a section here, here called Social Areas. So, okay. so let's run through them. Let's, let's go. Let's see. Mets Brothers, so they had beer halls, and in the beer halls, they had free meals, perform- performances, and beers for only a nickel. Fun. I, that I, sounds like so much fun. I know. I know. And I think the best part was that they invited uh, community German bands to play. I was just going to ask about that. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there was uh, the such German, a big German population out oh, there. Oh, the German culture is huge out there. So, like, Oktoberfest is really big. And there honestly are some, like, the beer halls themselves are making a comeback. I know that, like, um, Infusion Brewery has one down in, like, what we call, like, Little Bohemia. Um, and they're they're definitely, like, popping up a lot more because it's, it's like, such a big part of the culture there. That's all. I wonder how they're doing though with in, in, so in the current climate. Them, um, I would say okay because I don't know if your listeners know, but Nebraska did not shut down once <laughs> during COVID. Uh, we we stayed open. We didn't have a mask rule. Um, they just told everyone to go to Western Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, they were just like spread out. You can do it. It's a big thing. Uh, yeah, no. So uh, you know, for one reason or the other, the governor made that decision, and uh, you know, I think. Uh, I think up until recently we were the only state without a, a mandated mask rule. Wow, that's crazy. So, I, I mean, I'm sure that those places are hurting. I can remember when COVID first hit ground and a lot of the breweries um, were shut down and then for, like, I mean, like, two weeks maybe at most, which I feel like is, is very small compared to how it was in the East Coast. Right, right. Well, I, I guess, like, the Midwest, it got hit harder later. Yeah, so. probably because they didn't wear masks. But what <laughs> yeah. <I> <laughs> Well, in a back in the day, beer halls were good, and the German music was better. So thank you, Metz Brothers. And now stores, they didn't have beer halls. They had saloons, and they only sold okay. stores beer in the saloons. And I guess they got in trouble for doing that for some reason. So what Gottlieb did, he created a parent company to the brewery, and he named his wife president. And then that parent company owned all the saloons. So he kind of made it so there was no, like, double jeopardy. Got it. So very clever. But he was not too clever because after that he lost a battle against uh, Lemp Brewery that we mentioned earlier uh, because he put blue ribbons on his beer bottles, and that was what Lemp was doing. But at the same time, like, PBR, Paps, Blue Ribbon, that's what right. they, were, they were doing too. So it must have been, like, a weird thing that everyone thought was cool at the time. Was trying to do, yeah. Yeah. If only they saw now. 
Well, it's interesting, too, because I'm seeing with, like, stories is, um, you know, the prohibition obviously came into mm-hmm. to play with uh, with their history, so that's really interesting, too. Yeah, it will. Um, especially yeah, being in a state where, um, like, in Pennsylvania, like, obviously state store, like, state liquor stores, but in, like, Nebraska, I mean, you walk down Walmart and get whatever you want, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Pennsylvania is like the outlier because in Texas and Colorado, you can buy like anything in the stores. Right? They you need know? to get up with the times here. Well, well, they, they are starting to. I think like in Giant, you can buy beer yeah, and wine. Yeah, but it's, it's inflated. The prices yeah. are very inflated. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we still do it. Okay, so we have Mets Brothers, Beer Halls, Stores, Saloons, and now Krug. You mentioned it earlier, but he had a park called Krug Park. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And its nickname, I think you're going to like this, was called Omaha's Polite Resort. Oh. So probably a lot of nice people that. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> and it, <laughs> it seemed like a really cool place. It had a beer garden, and then it had amusement rides, like a tunnel of love and a wave machine. Nice. Which I think like that an, sounds fancy. I think early wave machines probably would have been like a death trap. Definitely. Um, even Tunnel of Love, I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah. Definitely and, could get COVID there. <laughs> yeah. And so everything was going dandy until the roller coaster had uh, some fatalities and they ended up closing. Oh, no. I know. I feel like that's, that's every terrible. that's every early park, I feel like it, though. So it's interesting. Well, I mean, like you, like I said, Creek Park... Um, Man, they have they have a really good. So it's in Benson, which is in the neighborhood, like in Omaha. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually had a couple of friends that were in town, and uh, they're from Philly, and they were like, "This part of Omaha runs into Philly." I'm like, "Cool, we made it." <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, no, their 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 beer menu is unbelievable, and um, the owners are great. Like, I can remember we sh- we showed up one one day for Fourth of July, and we were just like grilling hot dogs with the with the owner on like their back patio. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah, and then they, but the other thing that's just super weird, because I feel like you can never get both um, in a brewery, especially, or whatever, but they uh, have, like, amazing cocktails, but they mm. also have really good Bloody Marys. Like, they have these, like, insane Bloody Marys, so they're just an awesome place to go drink. Well, I hope you you don't miss talking about it, or you don't miss it <laughs> talking about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back and visit someday, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a place in Wilkes-Barre that's similar that i could find like that maybe <laughs> no, probably not the guy the, the owner probably just wouldn't have teeth and <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right uh so let's see he had krug park and then this is pretty cool he had he owned a baseball team called the luxus baseball team which was named after his beer and they actually made it to the amateur world series championship in 1915 in cleveland ohio and i only mentioned this they lost the the game but that game is reported as one of the highest attended baseball games ever. Wow. And it had 100,000 people. That's crazy. It is, it's crazy. Yeah. So I looked it up in the highest um, capacity stadium today is Dodger Stadium, and that's only 56,000. Oh, wow. That must have been insane. I, I know, For the amateur world, like, it's just crazy. Right? Yeah. But I thought that was a fun fact. Yeah, that's definitely cool. Well, let's talk about things that aren't as fun, such as pro- such as prohibition. Yeah. So. Damper, damper on the days. Yeah, I feel bad for all these people, all the all the breweries. They didn't do anything wrong, but then they all had to close. So during prohibition, Frederick Krug died, and the brewery just kind of died with them. Uh, Metz Brothers they sold their facility to an agriculture company. And then mm-hmm. they, they closed. They never brewed beer again. And the only one to make it through was stores. And and that's because they just reorganized and sold, like, ice and probably, like, pop and stuff like that. So they are, like, it's, like, the the breweries now, like, in COVID times that are surviving because they just pivoted. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's like, weird, the, uh, the parallels. Right. Okay, so after Prohibition... We have Fontenelle Brewing, and okay. so Fontenelle was pretty much Met's Brewing Company, but with a new name, mm-hmm. and um, they were named after 
Logan Fontanelle, who was the interpreter with the natives when the Nebraska Territory was established. Right. I do know that because um, they have a forest named after that, Fontanelle Forest. Oh, interesting. And it's like a really nice little walk around trail and they do like classes there and nature, like science through nature and those kind of things. Well, that's nice. It, it kind of sounds like he, he ripped them off, though. They sold it for, like, two cents an acre or something like yeah. that. It was seemed, yeah. seemed really off. But good for him. Uh, so, let's see. Fontenelle, so their owners were actually just investors from Chicago. I, I guess they okay. just thought Omaha was going to be a, a big happening place. And the product that I wanted to highlight was called Robin Hood. And oh. its tagline was, hits the spot. Okay simple we're getting a little bit more clever with these as we go (laughs) yeah uh unfortunately that beer totally flopped (laughs) and um so so fontanelle then they reorganized as metz brewing company so not metz brothers just metz brewing company and the family really wasn't involved they just the people who wanted this just kind of wanted it for the name if that makes sense yeah yeah and then poor metz they Lasted until 1972, which is when you see all these big beer brands kind of take over. And that was the end of Mets as we know it. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Okay, so stores, they resumed brewing and they actually became the largest brewery in Nebraska during okay. like the 1950s. And they yep. brewed one third of all the beer in the state. Wow. I, I know, I know. So... Uh, a product I wanted to highlight was called Storzette, and its okay. tagline was Original Beer for Women. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> the best part is they sold them in pink cans and with low calories, and they called them princess packs. <laughs> oh, well, I hate that, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Typical me to hate that. <laughs> I just, I would, I would like to see someone do that in this day and age. Oh, yeah, right? Could you imagine? Nope. Nope. Not even. Mm-mm. No, I do not. I don't think uh, there's no feminist out there that let that happen. <laughs> uh, stores, they were, like, really big in the community, and they had these places called hospitality rooms. Yeah. And I think the hospitality rooms were just kind of, like, early tap rooms, like, kind of lodgy places. <laughs> but they invited, like... You don't, you didn't have to be a member. Like any locals could just go there and drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of people I was reading in the articles, a lot of people have memories as kids going to these rooms with like with their their parents and just yeah, hanging out. Yeah, to meet up with people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And let's see, they they couldn't even last, even though they were the biggest in Nebraska. They didn't last past 1972 either. They sold, and then they closed. Mm. So. In 1972, no breweries in Omaha until we get to the modern beer scene. And that started pretty early in Omaha. In 1992, the second brewery in the whole state was in Omaha. And it was called, you, you may have heard of this, Jaipur Restaurant and Brewery. Um, Jaipur. Jaipur. I, I, I'm not even going to try to say it again. Jai, Jaipur. No, you're good. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's actually an Indian restaurant. Yeah, that's what I have written down here. Um which is it's it's, it's, have you been there yeah yeah we used to go a lot actually so it's like pretty well known yes it's in a place called like rockbrook rockbrook village and um just like a little strip mall area Mm -hmm. and uh yeah they have their own beer and then they also have then uh, like their food is really good interesting the the product i wanted to highlight i thought would go really good with indian food jalapeno ale uh, yes, it is amazing. Yeah, is it spicy? Yeah, it is, but just in, like, in all the right ways. Oh, yeah, sometimes when you drink, like, the jalapeno and pickle beers, like, it's just, like, too much. It's like pickle juice. Right, yeah. yeah. No, it's not, it's, like, not too spicy. It's it's just, like, it's it's so good. Interesting. Well, that was the first one back in Omaha after the uh, initial phase and that was in 1992, and then the second one came around in 1996, and it was called, or still is called, Upstream Brewing Company. Yeah. Yeah, you've heard of it? I am familiar with Upstream. I've been there. Awesome. Well, then you'll know they're located in a 
100-year-old firehouse in downtown, mm-hmm. I believe. Yep. And if you remember, do you remember what Omaha, what two phrases Omaha means? Um, upstream. Oh, <laughs> got it. Mm-hmm. Or was it upstream or against the stream? It was like against, against the current. Against the current, but against like upstream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, against the current. So that's where they got the name from. And the owner, Brian McGee, he worked with this guy named John Hickenlooper. And okay. he is now a politician in Colorado. I see commercials for him all the time. Oh, nice. The election's coming up. But he worked with him because he started uh, like the first brew pub in Colorado. And that's called Wincoop Brewing. And it's still in existence. Cool. And it's like right by the train station. And it's really cool. I'm not a huge um, upstream um, fan because they have, like, a lot of IPAs. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just not a huge IPA person. Okay. But I know people, like, there are, there's a decent amount of people that love it, so. Yeah, the product I have highlighted here is called Firehouse Lager. Mm-hmm. Got a 3.50 on Untapped. Um, I forgot to say the jalapeno ale got a 3.73, so okay. pretty average. Yeah, I think you have to, that's definitely like one of those drinks that you have to like, like that style of beer, mm-hmm. Maybe, not the Firehouse Red, but the jalapeno ale. Like. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Okay, so we had a little bit of a law, the first one in 1992, the second one in 1996, and then the third one that stuck didn't come around until 2013, and it was called... The Benson Brewery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see. It's located in an old movie theater in Mm -hmm. the Benson uh, neighborhood, which I guess is in North Omaha. Yeah. Yeah. That's where, um, that's exactly where Crude Park is. Yep, exactly. Exactly right. And the owner, Ryan Miller, not sure if you know him, you grow, grow wieners with him. No, I didn't grill any wieners with Ryan no. Miller, and I can tell you why, but you tell me a little bit about him. Well, that's all I got about him. But Just his name? <laughs> yep. But we, the... I, I want to, I, like, I, I always wanted to like um, Benson Brewery, but mm-hmm. I never could. It seems like it's um, an upscale, kind of more of an upscale place. Yeah, like, it definitely is because they try to do, like, fancy food. And they mm-hmm. definitely have, like, some good things. Like, I know they have a lot of... There's a pretty big, like, vegan community, I'd say, in, in Omaha. And so, like, I know they have vegan options and gluten-free options as far as, like, their food goes. But one of their things... Like, I always was just kind of, like, disappointed with their beer. I always wanted to be at this other brewery we went to, um, which I'll see if you get to. And mm-hmm. then... Um, their service just wasn't good. Like, multiple times we would just, like, want to get up and leave because their service was, was that bad. See, it, it's... But they, a, do, they do a lot of farm-to-table food, so we'd always want to go and try. Because yeah. Because all of their food is from local farms. Um, and so that's, like, amazing, obviously. And so we want to support that. And we love... I, I mean, I really like being down, down in Benson, but... Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's only so many times you can go to a restaurant and get stiffed, so... Mm. I, I, I understand. But, you know, you can go to Taco Bell maybe three, four times. In a row. Yep, but it's, it's been done. By, <laughs> by one person on this podcast right now. And it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one of... One of, one of I can, let me start over. Sarah, edit this out. One of Ryan Miller's beers that he brews that I wanted to highlight is called Blonde Bunny 3.45. Okay. And it's named after the high school mascot. I guess they're the Benson Bunnies. They are the Bunnies. Isn't that so funny? <laughs> it is hilarious. Yeah. It, it really, it's really funny. <laughs> so 2013 was a big year for breweries in Omaha. And that same year, Brickway Brewing and Distilling mm-hmm. opened. And yep. it looks like they're um, located in down in downtown inside like an old market district they are it's called the old market Mm -hmm. um it's the whole area of downtown it's super cool because all the roads are brick so Mm. it's like very old brick way Mm. yeah it's the only part in omaha that actually feels old because um yeah they have red brick roads um Brickway has an awesome, I know it's brew, we're talking about brew, like beers, but Brickway has an awesome seltzer that they make, which I don't, there's not very many, brew, like, local breweries that do their own seltzers, at least in Omaha there wasn't, so mm-hmm. 
Um, they make. I know that they have one really good one that I like to get. Interesting. We used to go down there um, and hang out and people watch during the College World Series. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's that's in Omaha. I, I would want to go to that in Omaha. It, it is in Omaha, yep. So let's let's uh, name drop again. The owner, Zach Tremert, probably butchering mm-hmm. that. I'm not sure if he wouldn't have been at this place, but he was the owner of Lucky Bucket Brewing Company in La Vista. Yeah, I've never been out there. I mean, I've been to La Vista, but mm-hmm. um, La Vista's kind of like, you know, quote unquote, the suburbs mm-hmm. of Omaha. And uh, they've been, since people have moved out there, they've been doing it up pretty good there. Where Lucky Bucket is, there's actually like three other breweries in the same strip, which makes it wow. nice for people because then they could do like a tour, you mm-hmm. know? Right, right. Um, but we just never made it out there because we lived so close to like, midtown and downtown that we didn't really need to go to the suburbs <laughs> that makes total sense i would be the same way yeah brickway brewing and distilling the product i wanted to highlight is called one way ipa and it got a 3.60 and you probably never had it probably never had it <laughs> definitely never had it <laughs> <laughs> in 2013 we're still in the same year stores trophy room grill and brewery opened and it was in a building along the waterfront. I guess there's like a little waterfront area along the Missouri. Yeah. And it was in sight. I guess there's still a, an old smokestack from the store's brewing company with the name on it. Oh, Does that, okay. you, you don't, do you remember seeing that at all? I actually, now that you say that, we totally pass that every time we cross over to the bridge <laughs> to go to Iowa. Yeah, yeah. And if it's on the waterfront, yeah. Probably right by yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. So they had, I could find two products that they had. One was called Triumph, and the other one was called Wood Duck Wheat. (laughs) It's a funny name. And they both got under three on on tap, so I think it was just kind of crappy. Yep. And they closed in 2016 because they refused to pay any rent (laughs) on the building. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, okay, so you have to follow the laws. Put your brewery and follow the laws. (laughs) So they, uh, they closed after that. But I, I think it was yeah, kind of just like a half-ass attempt at bringing the name back, and it just never worked. Yeah, I and mean, it didn't work. Right. Well, that was before I got there. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have one more brewery came around in 2013, lucky number four, and it was what called it? Infusion Brewing Company. I know you mentioned it. Yeah. And let's see, they are located also in Benson, in, uh-huh. in and an old meat market. Pizza. Yeah, and now they have a new one in an up-and-coming area Mm -hmm. of Omaha, which is called Little Bohemia. Yeah, I have that down here, and it said in the article that they exclusively serve their Czech Pilsner there. Yeah, and so (laughs) I think they keep it really, like, like, uh, whatever, Eastern European, I guess, like, really German stuff down there, and and they they actually have, like, a beer hall down there, which is is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I I like the concept behind that. Um, they also, in Omaha, now have two um, food halls, which are pretty cool. Mm-hmm, so it's like mm-hmm. basically like a food court, but a lot cooler. Um, and I know that Infusion also has one in the newest uh, food hall, which is called Switch in um, Blackstone. Wow, so now they is, have three locations. Yeah, and wow. so Blackstone, Blackstone is a lot where like um, medical professionals are because it's right by the hospital and there's a medical school there so there's okay. a bunch of med students but um, okay. yeah they and there's a couple of businesses and stuff down there but it's a super cool area um, and they just they are the bar that's in that in that the only bar that's in the uh, food hall right now cool so yeah. w- would you say we still have a couple to go but would you say they're the biggest one in Omaha I would say probably people would people would say that yeah probably okay. infu- infusion and uh, I would say probably infusion and um, uh, upstream uh, I don't know. cross probably which one um, cross strain brewing is a big one okay um, they have one that's like this like fairy drink I don't know it's got a cool ass label but it, <laughs> I don't think it's that good. Um, and then probably Brickway. I would say probably those three are the top, okay. like, well, extremely well-known ones in Omaha. Okay. That, that's good to know. 
Uh, let's and I think see. Cross Street Cross has one down by, um, I think they're also down in like um, the La Vista area where they have a, a couple in a row, like so Lucky Bucket's down there. Mm. And... Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm just looking at their uh, website. Yeah, it says they're located in La Vista. Yeah, so I think they're right on that strip. Cool. Um, the Fairy, Fairy Nectar IPA is uh, what people love from them, and it's got a, like I said, badass label, Skull with some fairy wings on the back, but it's not it, It's an IPA, so I can only like it so much. <laughs> I understand. Okay, I'm going to s- stop Googling that brewery. And so I actually have two products I want to highlight from Infusion. The first one okay. is just called Butcher Block Brown 3.50, but Butcher Block because they're in an old meat market, so I kind of like that tie. Right. And then the second one has a little bit of a backstory, so just hang in there with me. Okay. It's called Mets Jubilee, and it came out in 2018, and it has the story that follows. Okay, so the yeah. owner of Infusion, Bill... Babarek? Babadook? I don't know. Bill Bill B. Mr. B. He started to collect local memorabilia from breweries as a teenager. And before Twitter, there was this thing in the Omaha World Her- Herald that you can ask them a question and then they would print it in the paper and then that people who had the answer to that question could write the paper back. Yeah. Seems like really asinine and I'm glad we don't live in the 80s anymore. <laughs> so... Someone, he, he put this ad in the paper. He wanted to know more about the Fontenelle Brewing that we talked about. Okay. So he put this ad in the paper. He's like, does anyone know anything about this? And so this guy answered, and he actually came to his house. And um, the guy was Frank Curran, and he was an advertising agent for Fontenelle. And then when it changed to Mets Brewing Company, he was still part of the company. Yeah. And so when he came to Bill's house, the two shared stories and photographs and I'm sure a lot of laughs. Um, But that was the only time they would ever meet. So that was in the late 1980s. So we're going to fast forward now to 2013. Uh, This man named Rob Mangan, his grandfather died. And he was going through his possessions. And he found lots and lots of boxes of memorabilia from Fontenelle and Metz. Mm -hmm. And so he reached out to Mr. Bill. And he brought him over, and Mr. Bill was like, oh, wow, this, all this is great. And they probably shared stories and photographs and some laughs. And then they had an idea to bring back Mets beer. So they decided to brew this Mets Jubilee beer that came out mm-hmm. in 2018. And they actually, this is probably my favorite part, they worked with the same printing company to do the labels that was doing them oh, back cool. in the 50s. Yeah. So, you know, stories like that is what made me interested in, you know, doing this whole podcast, just because a lot of the beers that you drink have stories like that that you would never know. Right, yeah, I can see why that's appealing. Okay, let's get out of 2013, finally. And, okay, where are we headed? Well, just one year later, 2014. The next one came around, it was called Script Town Brewing Company. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of that? I have. I've been there once. Okay. They, oh, the brewmaster uh, actually won Home Brewer of the Year in 1996, and he beat out over 3,000 people. Interesting. So they probably have some pretty good beer. The one that I wanted to highlight is called Muddy Mo Amber Ale. Got a 3.44. I've never had the opportunity to even, like, drink their beer because, again, they're, with their, uh, their um, brewery being, or their storefront or whatever, is in uh, Blackstone, and it's got a, a little bit of a younger crowd. Okay. Um, so it's usually a little bit more loud and not really my style of place. So I think we went there one for once for a fundraiser, but um, yeah, I, I don't even think I've been able to actually try their their beer. But I do know they do a lot of collaborations with local places. So I know they have like one beer with like. Um, Architect Coffee, which is the coffee shop next to them, which is, I like stuff like that too, you mm-hmm. know, when yeah. like, multiple local places can and uh, can uh, team up on things is uh, pretty cool. Ab- absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I agree with you. We're, we're in our late 20s and we need our peace and quiet. Yeah, I can't be, I can't be like up against someone for more than like a solid 10 minutes. So, <laughs> so, so I, I lasted minimal time in, in that place. And it just, 
it's just a little too packed for me. <laughs> it's it's a shame. You probably would have liked it because uh, I read that they're known for their session ales, which are just like lighter beers. So, right, yeah, interesting. Okay, in the same year, 2014, another brewery came around, and this one was called Farnham House Brewing Company. And this is hands down my favorite place in the whole world. <laughs> is it really? I, like for so many reasons, uh, farm to table food there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I will actually drink the IPAs from Farnham because that's how good they are. Okay. Um, it's like an awesome family owns it. Their food is so good. Um, actually Brian's picture is in the kitchen of that <laughs> place because one of the, one of the cooks is like, uh, into strongman, I guess. Okay. And we, we were going there quite, quite frequently at one point. <laughs> Well, so yeah, I mean, that's, our, that's our place. We went there the first weekend I moved. Um, we got these amazing. They have like these like handmade tortilla chips with this amazing queso, and we got flights. And uh, they have some of the best. Like I love their dark beer, but they also have really good sours. Um, they do a lot of like uh, they have some some barrel ones, like a bourbon barrel one, okay. and then uh, they just they're just it's just a good place, and they get. They have awesome staff too. That yeah, that I mean, it sounds like sounds like the perfect place for you guys. Yeah, we are super bummed. We actually heard one of their um, their servers that we were really close with um, actually overdosed and died. So I'm like, kind of like I don't know. I, I would definitely want to give a shout out to Farnham because it's just, it's a great place to be. Yeah, and if you go there, I have written down that they, you said dark beer, and um, I guess they specialize in German and Belgian styles. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and they they have, um, I think their, like, triple is, like, one of my favorites. Mm, Because it's, like, 9%? Yeah. Mm. (laughs) It's okay. They they have uh, another one, too, again, I think, with Architect Coffee, which is in the same little district, and uh, um, I think that one is, like, something crazy like 10 or something percent and it's just so good it's on mm. their rotating one but mm. and they do nitro and they do like every you know the typical like crawlers and growlers and stuff so okay. just okay. A, it's a good place to be better place to drink and a, <laughs> amazing, an amazing place to eat <laughs> and uh the last note on it i have that it's located in the vault of an old furs company store yeah is that true that is true, and they actually, I do know this too, at the bottom, in the basement, they have a, um, they do, like, a brewery association. Oh, yeah, I have um, that written down that the owners are, I, I guess the founders or something of the South Omaha Brewers Home Brewing Club. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Moving along, we only have one more here. It was founded in 2017, and it's called Vis Major Brewing Company? Um, yeah, I think it's actually... It's probably not pronounced like that. Yeah, I don't know. I say <laughs> I say Vice Major. Okay. Um, Vice Major, you know, you, like, waited for the last two to get to my favorites. Vice Major is also bomb.com. It's so good. And, uh, let's see, owners, Tom and Lindsay Clements... Founded in 2017, mm-hmm. and uh, this major is Latin for "act of God." I don't know if you knew yeah. that. And I did know that. Do Do you know why it's called this major, though? Um, I feel like I only know this because something does it have to do like something with like farmers and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Uh, like like uh, wheat or something. I don't remember. They have this no. awesome like mural on their wall though and i asked them one time about it yeah that that's actually really very close i'm i'm very impressed so uh what i have down is that back in the day belgian farmers didn't understand the process of leftover grains and yeast and how that created beer so they would just essentially put that stuff in like a big tub and then they would come back in like a couple weeks and it would be like beer so so that it was like an act of god interesting mm-hmm. i'm sure there there's another place that have really good sours okay. um and i i know that they had this like one like barrel age that was also really good but they uh i don't i, I know they probably don't have it anymore but they had this like pineapple coconut 
something or other. It was just, it's good. And they're also another place that has just really good staff. Um, it helps. They have, they have games in their corner, so you can play, like, board game games. And it, it's just a really cool place. They have an Airbnb above it. So if anybody cool. wants to go and visit, they could stay. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Yeah. The uh, product that I think you might have had it, it's a Belgian triple, and it's called Monk's Chalice 3.81. Yes, I have definitely had that way too many times. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, actually, we fell into there. We fell into this one time because um, our, like, Costco and Sam's has local um, gift cards. Okay. And we ended up getting, like, you know, like, $100 worth of gift cards for $70 or $75 or something. Mm-hmm. So we got it, and we tried it one time, and then we, like, could have stopped going. <laughs> <laughs> well, it uh, seems like a pretty cool place. And so I I did the these notes a while ago, and then I looked up, and uh, before we end here, there is one more that's coming in Omaha. It's called Launch oh. Brewing. Okay, and it was be? Well, it was supposed to be in the spring, but then, you know, yeah. COVID happened. And the last article I saw about them was in May, and they said that things were still up in the air. Mm-hmm. So I'm not mm-hmm. sure if they launched, if Launch Brewery launched. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's all I got. Those are all the breweries. I wonder, I wonder where it's going to where it's gonna land. I have no idea. I mean, you can Google it. There's a couple articles about it, but... Oh, uh, it looks like it... I don't know. It's, like, tagged downtown, kind of. Um, like, between the Black Zone and the Old Markets. Interesting place for it, but there's a couple... Um, they're trying to make that place something cool, that area that it's going to. It's kind mm-hmm. of a little bit of run-down area, but there are some... There's a new coffee shop right there and a new, like, smoothie shop, so it looks like it, it would be a good place to add something a little bit more fun yeah and i i from the little bit i read i think they were trying to get like home brewers in there and it was kind of going to be like a launching point for home brewers to maybe make the next step Mm -hmm. yeah omaha omaha is really big on that they have a couple places where they have like these big like honestly old buildings where they let like local like artists and local um chefs like people that just like literally cook out of their house Mm -hmm. they let them do like pop-ups and they let them use their like like professional like restaurant um equipment and stuff so it's a really cool place to like support other businesses yeah that's awesome i mean it seems like a nice town i feel like people forget about it just because it has like no professional sports teams you know people don't think of it wait wait, the huskers don't count as a professional sports team (laughs) certainly not their football team don't tell people that there (laughs) it's okay i'm sure no one's gonna listen to this (laughs) Well, let's uh, wrap it up. you have any final words for us? No, I just say if anybody has the opportunity to go to Omaha, like, you got to try it out. I, I definitely agree. There's nothing that has a really big draw to it, but there are some really great things. Um, the food being one, you can't beat farm to table. You'll never have a better steak. But mm-hmm. also the beer and the community that comes behind it, I think they're just uh, honestly something special. It's definitely something very unique. Yeah, and if you fly into Omaha, you can go to both uh, um, Iowa and Nebraska. So that's a plus, too. Right, and there's also the, like, number one zoo is there. So there's fun things to do. <laughs> well, once everything's over, maybe we'll we'll take a trip out there. Yeah, let's do it. And let's uh, eat a little and drink some more. <laughs> mm-hmm. We can meet up with your old friends who might not even be your friends anymore. True. We'll see. That depends how long this COVID stuff lasts. (laughs) Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. If you want more information, please visit our website, brewerytowns.com, or just like us on Facebook and Instagram. And that was another episode of Brewery Towns.